I read this post yesterday and it said if most Americans were hit with a thousand pound emergency sort of bill, a lot of them would go into debt. Now for you UK people, that's about 770 pound. Then I read that 53% of 22 to 29 year olds have no savings at all. I thought this was ridiculously bad, so I decided to make this video. Hey guys, my name's Mike. I'm a financial minimalist investor sort of thing. So if you enjoy these kind of videos and you're new around here, make sure you subscribe and leave a like. With the average salary as low as it is, I'm not surprised people are struggling to save. Compile that with the cost of living and everything going up, rent, travel, food, car insurance. It doesn't actually surprise me that much. Let me know in the comments below if you have a car, how much you're paying for insurance and how old you are. That stuff really interests me. And just for reference, I'm nearly 24. I pay £180 a month and I've been driving three years. I knew savings would be low across the board, but not this low. And I thought this because of the lack of financial literacy I was taught in normal situations, i.e. school and college and things like that. So what happens is people grow up not knowing what to do with the money that they've earned other than spend it. So here's how you're gonna start managing your money like the wealthiest people on this planet. So hopefully you can get out of the situation you might be in and work your way towards becoming the 1%. But bear in mind, consistency is where you're gonna find most of your success. Now the first thing you need to do is hit the like button. But really and truly, the first thing you need to do is create an emergency fund that is at least six, I'd say six to nine months worth of expenses. Being wealthy or earning more than the average income obviously makes this a little bit easier, but that doesn't make it impossible. Life is wonderful, but it's harsh too. You can lose your job, your car can get written off, you can break a bone, things happen all the time. And you need to be able to see a bill for something like that with four digits and not panic. Obviously, if it's like 9,900, yeah, panic, but you understand what I'm saying. And remember, this is an emergency fund, not an, oh, I like the A-Class that everybody drives, or the PlayStation 5's coming out soon. This is an emergency fund, and it doesn't matter how much something is discounted by. Don't buy it. Buy it with the money that you've set aside for that. And this is something that I wasn't aware of until I did what I'm telling you to do. The psychological benefits, the freeing feeling that you have the ability to survive six to nine months or however long it is you can survive on the amount that you've set is, is powerful. I'm the kind of guy that doesn't like a lot of stress. I guess that's most people, but definitely not me. So having this is is it was just change it's just life changing i'm the kind of guy who needs to think two three years into the future and if i can't figure out what i'm going to be doing in that time i begin to stress so not having at least six to nine months worth of bills paid already basically yeah i, I couldn't i couldn't go back to not having that now the next thing you want to do is create a budget i said this i can't remember how many times i've said this but you need to create a budget sounds obvious but this is not common. I could list you 10 people I know that do not have a budget. Doing this will set you up way ahead of all the Instagram flexors that you see online. But real talk, if you're not doing this, you, you actually need to, if you're struggling, you need to do this. There's no questions asked. You need to have a budget and then you need to stick to it because there's no point making a budget and not sticking to it. It's hard. None of this stuff is easy. Nobody told you to grow up. I say that a lot, but you know, <laughs> nobody has the choice. Now the magic of a budget is simple. And I'm gonna tell you, the magic is, it tells you where your money's going and where it needs to stop going. I'm a visual person, so I kinda need to see things in graphs, in charts, in data. I need to see that. And if that's you, this will work well for you. And if that's not you, it will still work well for you because you'll still know where stuff's going. Now to make this really easy for you, you need to get an account like Monzo or some kind of new age bank where they tell you where your money is going. They split into categories 
and they make it really easy to understand and see and you can set limits and you can set saving goals and have different pots for different things if some budgeting sounds long then that's the kind of thing you need use an excel spreadsheet if you must just budget so for the next month i want you to track how much you're spending where every single pound or dollar goes and then i want you to segment those into things like bills travel food and excessive spending those are the ones that you can't really justify and then you'll be able to understand where you should be taking money out of which category you should be taking money out of to put into your savings pot i remember when i first did this i saw Deliveroo, Uber Eats, Just Eat, all of those things and once you see them all together and how much you spent on them, it's kind of, it's kind of shocking. Every time you do it, you don't think you're spending a lot of money, but it piled together is just a, it's just a different story. So now every time you do have a flamboyant moment, you'll think twice, hopefully. Now the third one is simply investing in yourself, investing in knowledge knowledge be it a book be it an audiobook it doesn't actually matter i hate books so for me it's audiobooks i think i've read one book in my life take a course on a high earnings skill so something like developing something like website design something like videography self-education is simply what it took for me to not rely on a job everything i learned to do what i do was learn online through me doing the searches. And that allowed me to work when I want, wake up when I want, and basically do what I want. I can't stress self-education enough. College and unis do not count as self-education. They have a curriculum that they follow. There is no way that they could teach you everything you need to know about a specific topic because there's time limits on lessons or so really it's up to you to give yourself the knowledge that you need and sometimes in a lesson environment they won't actually give you all the information you need to complete the desired goal so bear that in mind as well i'm not saying don't go to uni i'm saying do more so some of you whilst you've been watching this you've probably been thinking i've been doing this I've been saving I've been trying and there's nothing more I can get out of my budget and I totally understand where you're coming from but if you're at this point then the only thing you can do is earn more money or lower a huge expense so let's say you're paying a thousand pound for rent can you get that down to 800 maybe not in the same house a bit further from a train station maybe this might involve switching jobs, asking for more money at your current job, or creating a side hustle. Those things are going to help boost your income. Even if it's by 100, 200 pound a month, which on its own doesn't make much of a difference, but 200 pound on top of what you're getting, I'm sure everybody would want. Now that you've built up those savings that I mentioned before, you should now be in a position where you can take a lot more risk i.e. starting that business or investing in a business. So you've done the sensible thing, you've increased your income, you've lowered your expenses, you have um, an emergency fund. This is when it becomes interesting because your money should be making money. It shouldn't just be sitting and chilling. And if you don't have hundreds of thousands to spend, I'd recommend investing in stocks and using a platform like Nutmeg. Nutmeg is uh, an app that is basically you deposit money into your pot, they invest it for you, it's fully managed and they have a 9% interest, like a 9% growth averaged every year uh, for the last seven years. So that's pretty good. You're not going to get that kind of interest when it's sitting in a bank. You're going to get less you're gonna get like 1% interest when the inflation is at 2%. So actually having your money sitting in a bank is losing money. And doing this over a long period of time, like I said at the beginning, is where you're gonna get the most success. All of these things that wealthy people do, it's just boring, tedious habits that they've continuously had. They're good habits though, and that's the difference. So let's say you had 5K 
to invest into nutmeg link in the description by the way and they have a nine percent annual return generally speaking if you deposit 500 pound every month into nutmeg in 45 years you'd have just under 600 000 pound so link in the description check them out um if you enjoyed the video make sure you leave a like uh if you're new around here subscribe and i'll catch you guys later